Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here, and welcome to episode 7 in this highly modded Galileo's Planet Pack installation of Kerbal Space Program 1.3. In the last episode, we sent Burberry up to orbit to experiment a little with the USI life support mods. And we also did a pretty cool SpaceX style landing with what I was calling the Falcon 7. So if you haven't seen that, check that out here. What we are doing here today, though, is picking up some tourist contracts. You'll see there I was able to pick up a contract to take six tourists up to orbit. So we're going to start off by quickly creating a vessel to do this. And just because I want Burberry piloting this vessel, I've got the uh, typical command pod set up here. Burberry is going to go into the top of this thing. Um, the only reason I really want Burberry here is because I don't have access to any sort of uh, navball stability assist options. And Burberry does at least have the option to uh, thrust prograde and retrograde. So that's kind of better than nothing. So Burberry's going up. What we're doing though is we are using the take command mod now the take command mod basically allows you to assign crew straight from the vehicle assembly building just like any command module except you can now place the kerbal straight in to the external command seats so uh, basically as soon as you launch the crew will automatically spawn and jump into those assigned seats without needing to have some kind of setup where you need to uh, basically move the kerbals from a command pod and then get rid of the command pod. I've had to do this multiple times in my stock playthrough so it's just kind of a pest. We can actually put the kerbals straight into those command seats now so this is awesome. Now the entire goal of taking these tourist missions is simply to make money. We earn no science points off these missions, but you do get a fairly hefty reward, especially if you can take multiple tourist missions all at once. Um, and the great thing about doing them at this early stage of the game is that you only need to get to orbit. You don't need to take the tourists around the moons or anything like that because uh, you haven't actually flown there yourself yet and it will only give you contracts for tourism based on those that you've already completed with Kerbals of your own. So so uh, this makes it a very good time to do these missions, earn some money, unlock some parts and some building upgrades as well. And we always need that, right? So uh, just putting a basic booster here together. There's nothing overly advanced about this. I'm going to pop some uh, parachutes on there just in case we can recover this thing with the stage recovery mod. Probably won't be able to. I'm not really putting a huge amount of thought into the, re uh, the reusability of this booster. So you can see there we have eight Kerbals in those command seats looking very, uh, well, they're going to be looking very petrified here in a second. <laughs> we have Burberry up the top there, just loving being nice and protected while these poor tourist Kerbals on the outside are probably crapping their pants, I would say. Now, if you are new to this series and haven't uh, checked out any of the other videos, there is a playlist link in the top right appearing now. We aren't all that far into the game at this point, so checking that out would make a lot of sense. And if you do want to try this Galileo's Planet Pack installation, there is quite a bit of information in those first few episodes that shows you how to uh, set up and install these. Now you'll see we do have winglets at the bottom of this to lower that centre of lift right down, but for some damn strange reason, this thing just flipped out on the way up for no reason that I can really think of. The only thing that I can possibly think that might have caused that is that the Kerbals may have a lot of drag associated to them. Those helmets might be just pulling the whole vessel backwards, I don't know. But uh, anyway, uh, it wasn't too much of a drama. We were able to get that booster to get us right out of the atmosphere. So we are now on our second stage here using the Terrier engine. We'll just quickly time warp up until we're almost at the top of our apoapsis here. We're at quite a large height. It's uh, way out at 115 kilometers. So just enabling that engine there now. Enabling? <laughs> Seems like a strange word to use. Staging that engine. And uh, we'll slowly burn here and uh, basically circularize ourselves. We just need to get into orbit. Uh, and then all of these Kerbals will have achieved their tourist destination contract requirements. Which is obviously the goal. Now, uh, this mission is so lucrative because basically each of these tourists are going to pay us 35000 in funds. That's each. So this vessel in total has cost us around 23000 Obviously, we will get some of that back when we land, assuming that we do land. But even at a worst case scenario, this entire mission is going to probably net us almost 200000 in funds. Uh, very close to that anyway, and all we have to do is launch, get to orbit, and basically come straight back, land, and recover the vessel. We don't even have to worry about recovering it near the Kerbal Space Center or anything like that. 
We don't even have to worry about recovering the booster because we've got that much profit in this mission. It's just faster to keep on doing this mission a few times until we have enough money to unlock those parts or those building upgrades. Now, to be totally honest, I thought that I would have more liquid fuel in this Terrier engine stage at this point. I wanted to wipe off a lot more velocity uh, because these Kerbals are not going to be protected by the heat shield that I put at the bottom of this thing. In fact, the heat shield is actually completely, completely pointless now that I think about it. Um, so I think in this first attempt, I might lose some of these guys. Let's uh, let's do the Matt Lown trick of just spinning wildly and hope that uh, they will survive this. <laughs> <laughs> it is quite the carnival ride, I'm sure most of them are very much regretting taking the first tourist contract <laughs> up into space. We are down under 1300 meters per second though, so I think they're going to survive okay, which is actually really surprising. I'll actually pop up the, uh, the cheat menu here just to prove that uh, I don't have any of these um, options here turned on. We don't have ignore max temp. I'm running with 100% re-entry heating, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm sort of surprised that they've managed to get out of this uh, alive. It must have been the back of those uh, the back of those space helmets must uh, have some ablator on them or something. I probably shouldn't have chosen to come down on the dark side here of Gales. I'll just quickly ramp up that ambient light so that everyone can see what's going on. And just while we're descending, I just wanted to thank everybody for their comments in the last episode. I had mentioned maybe I should be taking the build footage out of these episodes and I got a lot of people commenting saying, no, please don't do that. We love watching the build footage. Um, I will probably revise how I'm showing the build footage. Maybe I'll add it at the end or something like that because I was noticing there was a little bit of drop off. Uh, as people were getting a little bored with some of the build footage, but um, I really appreciate everyone telling me that it was worthwhile me putting that in there because I do spend quite a bit of time doing that. Dropping quite slowly now due to all of the parachutes I've put on this thing and touch down there, quickly grab... Uh, <laughs> that must have been unpleasant for those underneath the vessel there. Uh, quickly grabbing a little bit of science. We can see stage recovery did pick up a little there as well. We'll recover the rest of our vessel and there we go. We have just earned around 200,000, perhaps even a little bit more. Now, some of you may have been a little confused as to why I had eight Kerbals in the seats. That's because I had Bill and Bob also at the bottom there, just so they could get up to level one. But our tourism service must continue and I'm sure that we don't have really very great reviews at all considering that we nearly burnt all of our tourist Kerbals to death. So we need to do some improvements to this vessel before we take our next lot. But you can see straight away we have got another six to ferry here. Uh, again, orbit around Kerbin. Again, the same value. Each of these returning us around 35000 in funds total. And there's also another here for four tourists. Uh, slightly less money. And there's another one here for, for another two. So we can take all of these guys all in the one trip. Um, so yes, we'll modify this vessel. We'll pop some more command seats on. Another four should do this. This time though, I want some more Delta V available to me. I'd really like that Terrier engine stage up the top to pretty much allow me to just drop our re-entry velocity just so that we're not almost killing our Kerbals because it doesn't make a lot of business sense to do this. So you can see here all our Kerbals, we can load them all straight up into those command seats and now we'll just modify our booster Sadly, I don't have a lot of the uh, tech tree unlocked yet, so I don't have large heat shields, which would probably uh, save me from needing to do this sort of thing. I also don't have any of the larger uh, fuel tanks or the larger rocket engines. I don't have the main sail or anything like that, so uh, it makes this a little bit more tricky. What we're going to do here instead is just uh, use our procedural fuel tanks to get as much Delta V as we can, and I'm just going to add eight of these rockets on the outside and one on the inside. Um, basically a combination, I think, of Reliant fuel engines as well as the Swivel fuel engines, just so I've got a little more control. Now, as well as creating a booster for this particular mission, I'm also creating the next generation of boosters to probably take uh, a Kerbal up to SETI in the next mission. So uh, just playing around here. Um, again, this is not going to be a recoverable booster, I don't think. There's not going to be quite enough Delta V for that. But if we can get this command pod and all of these Kerbals up to, well, basically almost orbital velocity, then uh, this thing has done its job. Just quickly adding again on those winglets down the bottom. We need uh, quite a bit of drag down the bottom. I don't know why that uh, vessel flipped last time. And just in case the stage recovery mod can recover any of this, we'll pop those parachutes up the top. And uh, now just playing with some of the textures to uh, get this thing looking kind of cool. I quite like the satin uh, configuration here for this particular booster, so we'll use that. 
And just doing some final tidy ups now, setting some auto strut rules so this entire vessel will hold together nicely. Uh, could of course use some real struts as well, I do like auto struts just because it doesn't increase the part count too much. Um, and yeah, I think I'll just pop these strakes down the bottom because it gives us a little bit more drag. You can see that center of lift is right down the bottom there, so we shouldn't have a problem with flipping this time. Uh, and um, just also I might uh, just switch four of the engines out for the swivel engines. The swivel engines are just a little more efficient, especially when you get them out of the atmosphere. So we can actually just disable the Reliant engines as soon as we get out of the atmosphere and just get a little more Delta V out of that. So you probably saw there all of the Kerbals switching rapidly into those command seats that Mod was doing that for us. Uh, very cool. So we'll uh, launch this thing now and we'll just head straight up for a while just to uh, get out of the thicker part of the atmosphere before we start doing our gravity turn just to keep these uh, very anxious looking tourists nice and safe. Now everybody on board here is a tourist this time with the exception of Burberry there in the command pod. So we are now up over 250 meters per second there now, getting right out of the thicker part of the atmosphere, so we're looking really good, uh, except we just flipped again. Why? <laughs> for, for no reason. All of our center of lift is right down the bottom, our center of mass is well above that. I don't understand, those Kerbals must uh, be giving us a lot of drag. Was able to recover it okay, so it's no drama, but uh, we are now way off course, obviously. It doesn't matter, we can come down uh, on Gale here, wherever we need. Um, we're not too worried about our landing location. We now have our apoapsis well above 70 kilometers, so that is great. For some reason, I forgot to actually add the Kerbal Engineer readouts on this vessel. Uh, I'll have to include it again uh, shortly, but um, yeah, we'll just time warp up to our apoapsis marker there, or very close to it, and we'll finish off the burn. I'll just shut down those Reliant engines because the rest of our fuel will be more efficiently burnt with the swivel engines. The other benefit of doing a lot of these launches is being able to just pick up a lot of that science that is on different biomes around Gale. So uh, yeah, uh, ideally I should have really included some temperature scans and uh, pressure scan instruments and that sort of thing, just so that I could pick those up as well. I'll uh, have to do that in future episodes. We are going to be landing back on Gale a great number of times, so we'll get them eventually. And really they're not worth much, so I'm not too worried about that. So because of the bigger boost this time, we have the vast majority of our liquid fuel left in the Terrier engine stage just to reduce our velocity a great deal. This should very much limit the amount of damage that those poor tourists are going to uh, encounter this time. They might get a little bit of a red glow there, but uh, it's nothing even remotely damaging. They will survive fine with that. Again, picking up a couple of science reports as we drop down through the uh, thicker part of the atmosphere, we'll pull out those chutes. And down we come for the second time to land with a bunch of tourists. Literally within only a few minutes of doing the last mission. It didn't take very long to relaunch this and rebuild that last vessel. Uh, so this is easy money. This is really easy money to make. This uh, one launch here is going to earn us around 320000 in funds uh, in profit. Uh, that's including the booster that we've largely lost there as well. So business is booming and Burberry is making quite a career out of just being a tourism pilot. This career, however, is only a stopgap until we have got enough money to do some much more exciting and uh, more rewarding things. So you can see there we did earn around 300,000 in funds there, so that's awesome. And immediately there is three more contracts here, again, uh, to do the exact same thing. So I don't know if this was just luck, but uh, I've just had them repeatedly. So we'll load up these tourists again. There was only seven tourists in that lot, so we might take another Kerbal that needs training at the same time, just so we've got an even number. And off we launch again, and this time we are rapidly speeding up this footage. Now, interestingly, this time the vessel didn't actually flip. Uh, with those eight Kerbals, so I can only assume that the Kerbals do add a lot of drag to the vessel. Now Vega Omega here had some interesting comments about the USI life support mods, and because I'm a little new to this, I'm still learning myself, so what he basically says is with the amount of supplies you have there, and this is of course referring to episode 6, the last episode, uh, is that what we need to watch out for is hab time and home time. Now hab time is how much time the Kerbal spends in a single habitat, uh, in the case of the 1.25 meter cockpit, it gets reset when he's moved to a different habitat. Now different habitats have got different hab times. Home time, however, is much more difficult in the late game, so it's automatically set to 25 days. The only way to pause it is by having a sufficiently large base that they can call home. 
Also, it can be reset by living on a world with a high enough colonization score. Now, this is all very interesting stuff, and I, uh, again, I don't know a great deal about this, so uh, for all those out there playing with USI, this might be most helpful. So thank you there, Vega Omega, for sending that comment through. That uh, is a nice, detailed uh, summary of some of the things that we need to know. So you'll see here, I chose to uh, try to land here this time quite close to our Kerbal Space Center. Uh, and uh, just touching down with uh, our eight Kerbals here now. One of these Kerbals, however, was Valentina, who needed to be leveled up to level one as well. So we'll recover that vessel there. And I don't actually think I show Valentina here. Um, no. But uh, yes, obviously we have all of our tourists there. And our tourism industry is now obviously booming because these missions are just repeatedly there over and over again. The director of the Kerbal Space Agency, Elon Kerman, would be very proud to have taken a few undisciplined scientists playing with fireworks and turned their hobby into a profitable tourism business, bringing space to the masses, allowing trips to orbit for only 30,000 in funds. Elon, however, has got more ambitious goals. This is not the dream. The dream is for Kerbals, or Galeons actually in this game, to set foot on Telamo, a beautiful ringed planet that may or may not support life. Only time will tell. So again for the last time, we are just setting our trajectory to come down quite close to the Kerbal Space Center. We'll probably just uh, come down around it just closely, just so that we can pick up any uh, remaining science reports or anything that are in slightly different biomes. Again, we have loads of fuel in this stage. We're going to burn it all and drop that velocity right down so we're not hurting our Kerbals too badly. So with these handful of tourist missions, we have earned a crap load of money. Almost uh, a million in funds will be available to us after we actually land this vessel, which is incredibly handy, of course. We'll be able to unlock uh, quite a few other things. I haven't decided what I'm going to unlock yet. I would like your suggestions. I think a good majority of the comments from the last episode were indicating that we should be heading off to SETI next with a manned mission and I think this is a great idea uh, thank you all for those suggestions please let me know what you think though below so there we are 984,000 there in funds almost a million so this is fantastic and uh, the number of contracts completed is just ridiculous so I hope you enjoyed that video. You can use this same strategy in the stock game just by doing lots of tourist missions. Uh, it's a really good way to earn money. I've done one of these similar sort of episodes in the stock playlist. If you have any questions or comments, please do whack them down in the thread below. If this video has earned your subscription, a huge welcome to the channel. And for my existing subscribers, thank you for being awesome. Today in the tile in the bottom left here, we have the playlist for this series. Please do give it a watch if you are new to the channel. In the top right is my latest video, and in the bottom right, a video that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you using some bizarre artificial intelligence that thinks it knows you better than you know yourself. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you all in the next video.